food and nutrition at the end of this lesson you will be able to define food and nutrition describe the main groups of nutrients explain the functions of food and nutrients you are what you eat wondering how far the saying is true well it's absolutely true your body changes the food you eat into nutrients later these nutrients are utilized by the body for various functions which decide the condition of the body without these nutrients in food the survival of life is impossible hence the diet that you consume should include foods that are rich in nutrients different people need different amounts of calories every day based on their age metabolic rate and medical condition an average adult requires about 2600 to 2800 calories each day while children require about 1800 to 2800 calories human body is complicated machinery subjected to liabilities and anomalies if not maintained properly one way of staying fit and healthy is to have an understanding of foods and the nutrients present in it hence in this lesson we shall discuss all the important aspects of food and nutrition food food is defined as a raw material which nourishes our body the right amount of food with proper nutrients ensures good health nutrition nutrition is the study of nutrients in food and in the living body it includes everything that happens from the time food is consumed until it is used by the body for various functions the science of nutrition deals with what nutrients we need how much we need why we need and where we can get them nutrients are components of food required by the body in order to grow reproduce and lead a healthy life basically over 40 essential nutrients are supplied by the food we eat they are primarily classified as macronutrients micronutrients macronutrients are required in high proportions by the body they include carbohydrates proteins fat and mineral elements such as calcium phosphorus potassium sodium and magnesium micronutrients are required in smaller amounts by the body they include essential fatty acids vitamins and trace elements such as copper zinc iron iodine cobalt selenium and chromium water is also a nutrient considered essential for life some of the foods contain dietary fiber which is strictly not a nutrient but is still considered essential for the body functions of food there are three basic functions of food which include physiological function social function and psychological function physiological function of food the primary function of food is to provide energy for carrying out the activities performed by us the second important physiological function of the food is to build the body and replace the worn out cells the third function is to regulate the activities of the body such as contraction of muscles clotting of blood maintenance of body temperature etc the fourth function of food is to improve resistance for fighting against diseases the social functions of food food has been a part of our social cultural community and religious life the psychological functions of food apart from satisfying physical and social needs food is required to satisfy emotional needs such as sense of attention and security let us now proceed with the primary function of each nutrient carbohydrates the primary function of carbohydrates is to supply energy cereals and pulses are rich sources of carbohydrates protein the primary function of protein is tissue building egg meat 
and milk are rich sources of protein. Fat Fats assist in the synthesis of phospholipids and they are stored in adipose tissues which are later used for energy creation. Calcium It provides hardness and strength to bones and teeth. It is present in milk and milk products. Phosphorus It is essential for growth and repair of body tissues. It is present in nuts and dried beans. Iron It is an important component of hemoglobin and is necessary for enzyme activation. It is present in pulses, whole grain cereals and leafy vegetables. Sodium, Chlorine and Potassium These minerals are required to maintain the body fluids in appropriate concentration. They are present in fish and meat. Fluoride It is important for strengthening the teeth. It is present in marine fishes. Iodine it is required for the synthesis of thyroxine hormone. It is present in yogurt, egg and codfish. Vitamins Vitamin A It aids in better vision and is present in carrots and lettuce. Vitamin D It is required for the formation of bones and teeth. Sunlight is the important natural source for vitamin D. Vitamin E It is highly effective as an antioxidant and is present in wheat germ oil, peanuts, spinach, etc. Vitamin K It helps in the coagulation of blood. It is present in green leafy vegetables. Vitamin B1 It is required for proper functioning of the nerves. It is present in beef, pork, nuts, eggs, etc. Vitamin B2 it is essential for normal growth and development. It is present in meat, oily fish and almonds. Vitamin B12 It is required for the synthesis of DNA. It is present in green leafy vegetables, fortified cereals and whole grains. Niacin It is required for the metabolism of carbohydrates and is present in peanut, mushroom, chicken, etc. Folate it is required for the formation of red blood cells and is present in potatoes, beans, lettuce, spinach, etc. Vitamin C It is required for the production of connective tissues and is present in fresh fruits and vegetables. Water Water is required for all body fluids such as digestive juices, mucus and blood. Now, let us understand how these nutrients are utilized by the body. The study of nutrition emerges from the cell, which is the basic unit of the body. All the processes of nutrients, called as metabolism, occur within the cells of our body. The cells are capable of absorbing the nutrients, synthesizing the required substances and excreting the waste. The breakdown of carbohydrates into glucose takes place in the cytoplasm of the cell and this process is known as glycolysis. The intermediate compounds of carbohydrates, proteins and fats are metabolized in the mitochondria through the tricarboxylic acid cycle that is TCA. Fats are broken down into fatty acids and glycerol. Glycerol is transformed into triose phosphate which is further oxidized to form carbon dioxide and water. Amino acids are absorbed by the tissues and are used to synthesize tissue proteins, antibodies and some hormones. Nutritional status Nutritional status is the state of our body as a result of the foods consumed and their use by the body. Good nutritional status is indicated by a well-developed body with normal weight and height, well-developed muscles, good appetite and excellent general health. Poor nutritional status is evidenced by a poorly developed body, abnormal body weight, poor appetite and susceptibility to infections. Thus, by knowing the important aspects of food and nutrition, we can plan our meals wisely and lead a healthy life. Summary Carbohydrates, fats and proteins are macronutrients 
while vitamins and minerals are micronutrients. Nutritional status is the state of our body as a result of the foods consumed and their use by the body.